In this video, we're just going to get some of the prerequisite things set up for a testing lab, which will involve um, setting up Python as well as Android Studio and ADB and our emulator devices that we're going to use to actually test our applications on. So to start off with, I want to get Python installed onto my computer if you don't already have it already. If you're running a Linux distribution, you're already going to have Python 2 installed on your computer, and that's great. You can leave that as is. You don't need to install any other versions of Python since all of the security testing tools that we're using are currently written for Python 2. If you're on a Windows computer, you're going to need to download Python. So um, if you go to the Python website here, which again, I'm going to put all of the links into the resources section of this course so that you're able to access them and follow along here. But um, if you go onto the Python website link, there'll be a version um, I am currently using, I believe, 2.7.18. I'd recommend that one since it's the most recent one. If you just click on download here, it will download the MSI file onto your computer. You'll just have to run it and follow through the instructions. And once that's done, you'll have Python installed onto your computer. Now, when you first install Python, it's going to place it into a um, directory here, which will be typically in C, and then you'll have Python 2.7. What you want to make sure is when I right click on my, um, oh, not on my local disk, when I right click on this PC in this case and go to properties, uh, you'll see that there's there's an option inside of here for um, advanced system settings. And then inside of here, there's an option for environmental variables. You just want to make sure that inside of this path here, when we edit it, the location of your Python installation is in it. So you can see that I have C Python 2.7, which is the base directory here. And then I have C Python 2.7 slash scripts, which is where pip is located for Python. So we want to make sure that we have this path as well available to us. So I'll put this path variable into here and I'll also put it into my system variables. So inside of here, you'll see that there's a path as well. And inside of here, you'll see that I have the same Python 2.7 and the same Python 2.7 slash scripts. If you need to add it, you just click on new and just copy this path and paste it in and it will be set in there. To verify that this is working, you could just open up a command window. When you type in Python, you should see this pop up where it says Python, in this case, 2.7.18 is the version that I have. This will display whatever version of Python you currently have installed. Then I can click exit. And then if you type in pip, you should also get um, something pop up. Uh, usually takes a few minutes here for it to actually pop something up. But if you see it sitting here and actually like thinking and trying to process rather than saying pip doesn't exist, then you do have pip installed. So you can see this is generally the information that displays when we run pip. So as long as you can access the two things through command line, you've got everything set up correctly. Again, I think by default now the installer will set up these path variables for you. But if it doesn't, you just need to come into these environmental variables here and set these two paths to have um, your Python 2.7 and your Python 2.7 scripts folders accessible. So you just want to make sure that those are accessible and that that's all downloaded. Again, if you're on Linux, you already have Python 2 installed and it should be accessible through command line by default. So you should be good to go. You may need to install pip and you could probably do that through, um, you know, depending on your Linux distribution, you'll be able to do that through your, um, through your command line through like app.get or um, you might be able to um, download it off the website as well. So that's just something to keep in mind regarding pip as well. So once we have Python set up and installed, we also want to install Android Studio. So again, links will be into the resources section. Inside of here, you'll see that we have um, the availability to download a Windows, Mac, Linux, or Chrome OS version, depending on what version you're currently running on. You're just going to want to download that and then install it the way that you typically would any other program. Um, so for Windows, for instance, we're just going to download the XE and run it. Just follow through all the instructions, click through it. You'll get everything installed and you'll have Android Studio all set up. Uh, this process takes a little bit of time, so I've already installed the Android Studio on my computer. And from here, I'm just going to walk you through some of the main components that we want to work with inside of Android Studio. So once you get it installed, just go ahead and launch it and then, um, you know, proceed through the default dialog, create a new default project. You'll be set in a screen that looks like this, um, minus the code here. So um, you'll have something that looks like this, likely. Now. If we want to go ahead and get an Android um, virtual device set up, what we do is we go into the tool section here and you'll see this option that says AVD manager. You go ahead and click on AVD manager and you'll get this page here that says create virtual device. If you click on create virtual device, you'll see that we have a whole bunch of different devices that we can choose from. 
you really pick whatever device you like. Um, typically, you want to pick one that has this Play Store icon here because those ones are typically compatible with any Play Store applications. Um, so if you're pen testing like a real Play Store application, you want to make sure that you pick one that will be able to take in that type of app. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Pixel 3. So I'll select this one here and press Next. Um, out of no real reason that I just prefer the Pixel 3 for testing. So, um, you know, you can pick whichever one you really like. Um, and then in this case, we're gonna go ahead and select our release version. So um, you can pick any operating system version. I think all of them tend to work with the app that we're gonna be pen testing with. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select Q in this case, since it's the, the newest sort of stable version, 10.0. So we'll go ahead and press next on here. Um, sorry, just one other note here is that if you don't currently have any of these installed, you'll see it grayed out with an option that says download. So you need to click on download and then it will walk you through the download process for those system images. And then once you have it downloaded, you'll be able to select it and move forward to the next step here. The next step here is just gonna be to name your device. Um, I'll call mine a uh, pen test device, just that way I know which one it is. And then I can go ahead and press finish. From here, your virtual device will be set up, and then you can just click on the play button and it will launch your virtual device. So it's just gonna take a few minutes for us to get this device launched. Once we have it launched, I'm just gonna walk you through um, one other important detail, which is known as ADB. We just wanna make sure that that's working and set up. It actually comes pre-built with Android Studio. So once you have Android Studio installed, you'll be able to access ADB as well. So you'll see here, um, it will take a few minutes generally for your phone to boot up depending on you know what sort of computer you're running. Um, but once it does boot up, then we'll get this main screen here and we'll see that it looks like everything is working well. So from here, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go back to my command window and I'm just gonna test to make sure that ADB is working. ADB is the Android debugging bridge, which allows us to interface with our Android device. Um, so it allows us to do things like install apps and shell into the device and be able to you know, do different commands sent to the device. So it's a nice useful utility that comes built in with Android Studio. To test it, you should just be able to type in ADB shell. And once you do this, you'll see that I get a shell into my device. And then I can run commands like ls, for instance, which will list the directories of where I'm currently at. You'll see some of them give us permission denied because we don't have root access on this phone. We're just using like a typical Android device. And this generally shows you all the different things that you can do with um, your Android Studio setup. So we can set up our emulator. We can use ADB to shell into it and do different commands. And throughout this course, we'll see a lot of different ways that we can use um, ADB and sort of the related tools to be able to work with our emulator and pen tester applications. So from here, you have all the fundamentals set up, and then we're gonna move into setting up some of the specific hacking tools that we're gonna to use to be able to pen test our applications and decompile our APKs and do all these different things that we might wanna do as a pen tester.